Cox and Ranking Member Scott, and thank you, um, Mr. Secretary, for being here. Um, I was uh, interested in the, the response that you gave to um, Congresswoman Fudge, so I want to follow up for just a moment. Uh, controlling family timing and size can be key to unlocking opportunities for economic success, education and equality, and access to contraception can help women complete their education, join the workforce, planning, delaying, and spacing births will also appear to help women achieve their education and career goals. And so with all of the economic benefits that access to comp contraceptive brings, it seems a bit illogical to me um, for the department to issue interim final rules that erodes a woman's right to access uh, comprehensive preventative health care. My question is, uh, have you done, the department, have you done a complete um, assessment of the number of women and their dependents and ERISA plans that could lose access to contraceptive coverage? And if so, w what's the number? Um, Congresswoman, as, as I said previously, the, um, the rule recognizes that for some organizations, religious freedom should allow them uh, uh, to not offer that coverage. Uh, it provides the option for that organization. It was enacted pursuant to the Administrative Procedures Act. Uh, within the APA, uh, there is a requirement that the APA um, process engage in a cost-benefit analysis, and uh, that would be contained within that cost-benefit analysis. That's something that we certainly could provide to, to you or to your staff. So you have done an assessment? You know how many? Is that what you're saying? Um, what I'm saying is that um, within any rule, there is a cost-benefit analysis that takes place, and that assessment is required by the Administrative Procedures Act, and, and so that assessment can Okay, let me, let me just, uh, okay, thank you very much, and I would like to receive that. So, um, you know, according to the National Women's Law Center, uh, when we think about the, 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 the wage, and someone raised the fact, uh, raised uh, questions about the minimum wage, the federal wage, um, minimum wage now is five, uh, 725 an hour. Um, the average cost of, of a full year's uh, worth of birth control pills without insurance uh, was the equivalent of 51 hours of work before the ACA's contraceptive benefit was imposed. And so when it's a fact that women on average are, are paid less than men, uh, I don't see how we justify, I don't see how you justify forcing them to pay more than men for preventative health coverage. And I'll just submit my other questions to you. And thank you very much. And Madam Chair, I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Um, Ms. Handel.